So at the moment, I'm waiting for some feedback from a grade I sent off to a client. So I thought I'd make a quick video about color management in project settings and in node based color management. I do get this question quite a bit. So I thought I'd just go through it today and show you the difference or the no difference when it comes to working in either project settings or node based color management. First of all, let's do our color management in project settings, but let's quickly talk about the clips because this is quite important. So our first two clips here are ProRes, but they are Ari clips. Then we have a Blackmagic footage here. I'm pretty sure this is 6K. We also have Blackmagic here, but this is RAW. So Blackmagic RAW or BRAW, if you want to call it that. This is really important to know, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Then we have RED here. This is RED ProRes. Then we have RED RAW again. It is important to know if your footage is raw or not. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a double color space transform. Then we have some Sony footage here. This dude just walking through the forest. Let's do our color management in our project settings. So what do you want to do? Come down to your project settings here. Now, I'm pretty sure this is default. I'm not sure. I never do color management in project settings, but it doesn't matter. What you want to do is you want to go to DaVinci YRGB, color manage. Then you want to take off automatic color management color processing mode, come down to custom. So this is where we're gonna do all that exciting color management. Input color space refers to the camera that you're using. Now we have multiple cameras, so it doesn't particularly matter, but I'm gonna change it to RE Log C3. And we're gonna come up here and click use separate color space and gamma. That's just gonna give us a few more options here. Now we don't have to set up RE Log C3, automatically done it for us. Timeline color space, DaVinci white gamut, DaVinci intermediate. Why do we use these ones? Because it is a bigger working space for us you know greater latitude saturation things like that we don't want to work in rec 79 that would be a smaller color space we want as much room as possible when it comes to our color grading so davinci white gamut davinci immediate is the one that i use now you don't have to use this color space you can even use the ari log c3 or asus or anything you really want now timeline working luminance we want to put this as high as possible so we just click custom here and that's going to give us 10,000, which is more than enough and that just refers to our luminance in our scene so higher the amount the more space we have we don't want to be going underneath because we're going to get clipping and our footage is going to look god awful output color space this is referring to our image after we've color graded our outputting of that image so output color space rec 709 because this is for the youtubes we're going to go for gamma 2.2 now we can leave this as we're not using HDR footage today. Limit gamut output to our color space. Obviously, this refers to this, so we can just leave that. Input DRT. This is referring to our timeline working luminance. We can just leave this as none because we already have it set up as 10,000 nits, so nothing to worry about there. Output DRT. You can either use DaVinci or Luminance if you'd like. I usually use Luminance, but today we'll just use DaVinci. Now we're going to click Save. Okay, so nothing has actually happened, and that's because we need to set up our color management with our clips here. So we have our Ari clips here. So what we can do, highlight them both, right click and go to input color space. Now, for whatever reason, uh, DaVinci Resolve automatically sets to Rec. 709. We can just come up here and click project Ari wide gamut and that set them up nicely. So this is because we set it up as Ari in our project settings. Now, normally if it's a different camera, which I can actually show you instead. So this one here is the Blackmagic footage, but it's Blackmagic ProRes. So we're gonna go to right click and we're gonna to go to input color space, Blackmagic design. And we're gonna go down to Blackmagic design wide gamut four to five. Now for our input gamma, we're gonna go again, Blackmagic design, and we're gonna to go to film gen five. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna save this still here. So then we can compare it to our node based color management to see if there is a difference. You might notice that these two clips here actually look like they're already set up and that's because they are and that's because they're working with raw footage resolve will automatically set up your raw footage if you set it up in your project setting what i mean by that is with that footage here we're going to go to project settings i'm going to come down to raw let's go to black magic raw i'm pretty sure that normal the color space for the default is black magic design and the gamma is um black magic design film now we want to be working in that DaVinci wide gamut. So I've set it up as DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. So we can just leave that as is. Now we also have some red footage here. So we just have to make sure that is also correct. So let's go down to red here. And this would be your settings. So color science, IPP2, and then red wide gamut RGB. And for our gamma curve, log 3G10. I always leave the ISO, exposure, adjustment, et cetera, et cetera. All this 
I keep it as is because I don't know how it was shot on the day. And I always trust that cinematographer wants these settings. So I'm just gonna leave that as is and everything else should be fine. So we can just go to cancel. And then we have our red footage here. Now, because our red footage is red raw, again, we don't have to change it. That's all set up. And then we just have, oh wait, sorry, this is red footage. <laughs> this is not Sony footage. So let's just set that up as, where is it? Red and red wide gamut RGB. There we go. There's a slight change. This is our Sony footage. So again, let's highlight them both and let's go to input color space, red, sorry, Sony S wide gamma three. I've lost my mind and come down to again, S log three. So there we go. Now the shot is even more cinematic with our man walking around. And then Isabella, we can just go to input color space, project REYG, okay? All good. So now all our clips are set up with our color management and then we can start doing our color management. Now that's all good, but what happens if you want to color manage in nodes? Does it actually change? So to do this, let's go down to our project settings again. So in our color management here, in our color science, we're gonna go to DaVinci YIGB. Now this is how we're gonna set up. We're also gonna click this, use separate color space and gamma. Timeline color space, we're gonna go to DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and again, we're working in a larger color space. This is gonna make us easier, or make our, make it easier for us to color grade, make us easier. Our output color space, we're gonna to go to Rec 79 and Gamma 2.2. We're gonna click Save. All our clips here are back in that flat working space, or log working space, whatever you wanna call it. So now we just need to set it up with our nodes. But the first thing I'm gonna do before I do this is I'm gonna put everything in a group. So these two are Ari, so I'm gonna highlight them both, right click, and then go to Add New Group. And we're gonna call it Ari. Okay, now what you've noticed is that you actually have all little dots up here. That's because we've been given two extra spaces to work in. So now we have a pre-clip and then we also have a post clip here. So in my pre-clip here, this is where I'm gonna do my initial CST. So I'm gonna to go to our effects here. I'm gonna do color space transform, and put it on my first node here. Now again, Ari footage, so input color space, Ari wide gamut three, input gamma, Ari log C3, output color space, DaVinci wide gamut, output gamma, DaVinci intermediate. Let's turn this off, we don't need this on. Okay, so now that's set up. And this one is also set up because it's a part of the same group. Now you could do your ODT in your clip here. So you output color space. But what I would do is put it in my timeline here. And then that's gonna affect all my little clippies along here. Again, color space transform, input color space. So we're going from that DaVinci wide gamut we were working in and DaVinci intermediate. Now output color space, we're gonna be in Rec 79 and then Gamma 2.2. Tone mapping, we're gonna leave it as DaVinci because that's what we used in the project settings. And we're gonna click Use Custom Max Input. We're gonna crank it right up. So you don't remember that we did in the project settings. That's that one there. Okay, Use Custom Max Output. And then Gamma Mapping Method Saturation Compression. So now, these clips here, because they're raw, they're already set up. So we don't actually need to change these at all. <laughs> Look at this guy. Uh, okay, so that's all good here. So we need to change this one because this is that black magic, but it's ProRes. So again, color space transform. And if I remember correctly, it was DaVinci wide gamma four to five. And it was film gen five, DaVinci intermediate, DaVinci intermediate, sorry, DaVinci wide gamma, DaVinci intermediate, and then put that as none. And then we just need to set up the Sony one here. So I'm just gonna copy this one across and be lazy and then just copy across. Oh, we Actually, you know what? Let's not be lazy. Let's put these two in a group. So highlight them both and then add into new group and we'll call it Sony CST. So in my pre one, what I would do is just put that color space transform on. And then again, same as before in our project settings here. None. So these two now are both set up, looking very good. Timeline is all set up. Everything is good. And this is the Ari footage here. Um, we can simply just, oh, we've got to set up these ones. Okay, well, we know what they are. They're the Ari ones. So basically it's the same as the project settings. But what I want to show you is this clip here compared to our other clip here. And as you can see, they're both exactly the same. I'll go to a different frame here. This frame here, this is the one we did our node-based color management in, right? Looking very nice. Then remember we saved that still with our project settings. 
in our color management. If I were to get to a different frame, you can see that there's actually no difference at all when it comes to working in color management in your project settings and your node-based color management. For me, I actually rather work in node-based color management. I like to see what I'm doing. I feel like for a weird reason, I have more control. Yeah, if I leave a project settings, I just feel like it doesn't feel like I'm in control of my color management. If you want color management in project settings, that's perfectly fine. You can do it that way. There is nothing wrong with doing it that way. But for me, yeah, I just like node-based color management, but they're exactly the same. So you're not really gonna have any issues when it comes to color management in which way you would like to do it. So I hope that clears things up. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. If you are wondering color management for a certain camera, leave a comment below and I'll make a video or I'll just tell you in the comments. I'll probably just make a video, it's actually kind of easier. But yeah, I hope that's cleared things up for you. I hope you have a great weekend. I've been Drew from Haiti Films and thanks again for watching.